Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, more player reviews for these specific SPCs uh, that EA announced recently. Um, these are the types of SPCs that I didn't review when they first came out. So uh, people seem to really like the flashback Boatang SPC. Now I know that these videos uh, are a little bit late in regards to uh, whether or not uh, people were interested in seeing if the, if the player is worth it or not. But uh, I thought it would be an interesting concept to go into again. Uh, because people seem to like these videos a lot, right? So uh, these are the types of SPCs that we'll be reviewing in the future. So Liga Noj, uh, Serie A Tim, Major League Soccer, blah, 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 to see which player would be the one that's probably the worst, or, or, or the not the worst, but the best player to get. So with the Swedish Player of the Year card, these are his stats, right? So Paling over here is a four-star, four-star. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, Footbin 2 just so I can show you guys the specific stats um, when we need to see them. So we're gonna go ahead and put up Paulinho here. Paulinho is spelled the same exact way, left wing, okay. So with Paulinho's card, he is five foot nine as a left winger, right footed four star, four star. So right off the bat, uh, that's a really good start, right? Now obviously would it be nice to have the height? Yes, but most wingers in the game uh, do have low height, uh, which is, you know, it's okay. Uh, medium medium work rate. So the good thing about the medium medium work rates on Paulinho's card is that it works out really nicely for his card, right? I'll explain why. And Mares and Mares is a very similar type player. Medium medium work rates with these types of stats that revolve around uh, quickness on the ball, right? Because if you look at his stats, he has 89 acceleration, 89, right? 81 sprint speed, 87 agility, 98 balance, right? His his card rotates, um, revolves around uh, quick dribbling, right? So the good thing about his card not being a high medium is that the the play style of this card is going to be conservative attacking, right? He's not going to be that type of player that's going to, you know, get in behind the defense that often because of his medium, medium work rates. Now, as I'm saying this, this is basically saying it off of um, a concept that you are only using him on balanced instructions, right? If you tell him to get in behind, he will obviously get in behind because the work rates will not contradict the instruction that you are telling him to, to do, right? He will get in behind, but it won't be ideal. Using Paulinho on balanced instructions is probably your best bet because it will rotate more around his play style that the game wants him to play, right? So because his pace is not like you know, Mohamed Salah's where it's like 92 or something with 95 acceleration or whatever it is that Salah has. Salah is a high medium player. So those pace, that pace that he has and that getting in behind the defense is his characteristic. But Paulinho is very similar to Mares in the sense where it's based off of uh, dribbling when you have the ball at your feet, right? So if you look at uh, Mares' card over here, we'll just look at Mares' uh, second inform card, right? If we look at Mares' card right here, you could see that it's very similar with his card. He's not based off of sprint speed. He's based off of acceleration. So it's more about dribbling with the ball at his feet to open up the space. He's also a player that is also medium, medium work rate. So it fits the play style of the card more because of the work rate that they have set to him, right? So with this card, everything, everything works out really nicely because of the characteristics of the card, right? So 5'9", medium, medium, 4 star, 4 star with very, very important right foot on the left side because you guys know those finesse shots really really effective right we're gonna look at his attributes now so he has 89 acceleration 87 agility 98 balance like we said before so that's amazing to have because 98 balance right while being five foot nine he's basically never gonna lose his his um he's never gonna lose his center of gravity but or, or if you guys know what i mean like when you're using someone like a bum yang he will do that animation where he's like falling, right? Like, oh, I can't believe I don't have balance, right? They do that, right? Paulingo's not going to do that because five foot nine with good balance and agility going to help him out a lot, right? His dribbling stats don't even need to be that high. It's perfect the way it is with the 81 ball control, 82 dribbling, although you should probably give this card a sniper anyways or a hunter, to probably a hunter to be honest because you want to increase the pace as much as possible and the finishing and stuff, right? Because composure at 84 is pretty decent, right? But with this card, right? If we were to go search up it up, search it up right now on Footbin, uh, the card that I would recommend using Paulinho with because the pace is lower. Always remember though, just because you give a hunter, right? So if you look on the website right now, if we give him hunter, which is I always forget where it is, and I probably just passed it, and I probably just went over. There it is. If you give him hunter, 
the card will not feel like it is a plus 10 plus 10, right? It will feel more to his base card stats because if you give him plus 10 plus 10, then this, guy, this guy should move around the pitch like Salah, but you know that he's not. Do I think that they increase the pace by that much? No. Do I think they increase it? Yes, I do. So I think Hunter would be the best option because your composure, agility, and balance is already pretty good. So his dribbling is going to be pretty solid, right? So as a left winger who is Brazilian, it's kind of worth doing the card for the fun concept, right? Because if you look at Paulinho's card right here and you look at the specifics that you need to do the SBC, it requires one Swedish player, one or minimum, right? One Swedish player, one Brazilian player, uh, four rare players, 82 overall rating, team chemistry 80, and number of players in squad 11, obviously. Two days remaining, to be honest with you guys, if you guys want to use this card for fun, you want to have a left-wing Brazilian, because uh, you're, let's just say, for instance, right, you're using a team that has uh, Roberto Firmino as your striker, right? So Roberto Firmino would be over here. So I could just do this in the SBC because I'm probably not going to do it myself, but I'm, I'm just saying that the SBC is worth it if you guys want to have fun with it, right? You can put Roberto Firmino up here, and then you can put Fabinho over here, right, if you're making a team. And it would work out really nicely because, as you guys know, uh, with these types of teams, right, easy. The rest of it is EPL or Brazilian, and, you know, you have so many options with that. So if you go ahead and do the Paulinho SBC, right, Paulinho's card, I uh, don't think it's the 85 one. I think it's the 78 one. Uh, Paulinho's card. What's Paulinho's first name? Paulinho, Paulo, oh, Paulo Jose. I don't even know if you'll be able to find it that way. So Paulo, Paulo. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work like that. It's not going to do like his full name, no. Paulinho's regular card is a 72. So that's how I'm going to search it up. So Paulinho. Paulinho, Paulinho. I'm going to search up Paulinho right here. So it's a 72 rated card, right? So we'll do that one right there. Concept, it'll pop up with the 82. Bang. So if you put him in the team, right, and you use a Hunter chemistry style on him, he's on full chemistry, right? So again, it's kind of worth getting. Right foot, left side, really quick on the ball, has decent composure in 84. His finishing, his finishing can be improved a lot, right? He already has good, pretty decent shot power. Slap a nice little Hunter on him. Increase the finishing and the shot power like you guys can see right here. Uh, plus 5 finishing, plus 10 shot bar. Is it by that much? I don't know, but you guys get what I'm saying. An 84 composure, so it looks like a really solid card to get. The other options that you have in a left wing position for Brazilians, and this is this is the part where we see if it's worth it or not, is is there any other good option? Because obviously if you go with uh, the Swedish League, right, which we're going to do right now, if you go with the Swedish League, and we're just going to search for like any concept players, right? If you go with the Swedish league, you can see that they have absolutely zero options, right? There is absolutely nothing to work with. So if you get Paulinho's card, you are getting him with the knowledge that you will that you will be using him as a left wing Brazilian player, right? Because if you look at the different options that exist, uh, that exist for Brazilians, the only one that is a good example of a player that you can get instead with a player that's not an untradeable is. Uh, Williams card, right? So if we search up Brazilian over here and we search up um, a left wing, a left wing Brazilian, you can see that Willian has his inform version of his card, right? So I think Paulinho's card would still come out cheaper than this inform Willian. So if we were to put Willian into the team over here, we're going to go ahead and check his price. Probably expensive, right? So 200k, 180k, that's what the card costs, right? Uh, around 180k. I think what the requirements for this team, it might actually come out cheaper, but obviously there's a difference, right? Because the base card stats from Willian is obviously better than the base card stats from Paulinho. So if we look at the two differences, which we can't do from here, if you look at the two differences, 82 shooting, 83 shooting, 71 passing, 84 passing. So that's the difference between the two, right? 89 pace, 85 pace. So with Willian, I would still slap a Hunter card on Willian because I want to increase his sprint speed. I want to increase his uh, his finishing stats, but his composure is low, right? 79 composure is not ideal to have, but he is a right-footed player on the left side that has more pace. The, the, the work rate set with Willian on high, high work rates, again, works out for his car because he doesn't have the sprint speed. Sprint speed is very nice when your players are a high, medium, high, low, right? So his play style will be very good. So he's the only real comparison you can make it to because the only other comparison that you would make the left wing to, which I don't even think he's a left wing, I'm pretty sure he's a left mid, is Douglas Costa. So if we search Brazilian left wing, right, you could see... That, oh, sorry, I almost forgot the God tier players. I don't know if people like me comparing them to the God tier players. Uh, 
so I guess it's like 50-50. So I, I guess we'll just we'll, we'll link him up with them. Rivaldo, Na obviously Neymar is so stupid in this game. This guy, this guy right here, in bad gameplay, this guy's a god. This guy moves around the pitch, man. This whoo, don't even don't even get me started on this. This card, put a, I would put a hunter on him. Screw the uh, screw the dribbling. The dribbling's already gods here. Put a hunter on him. Increase that shot power, finishing space. Just you know, high medium. Remember that high medium work rate. So he's gonna like this around the pitch, man. So, uh, but. Obviously, Neymar is the other option. So, Neymar got a link with Brazilians, PSG. You got Rivaldo, right? But these cards, the reason why I don't compare with these cards is because these cards are expensive, right? The difference of price between a Neymar to a William Paulinho and even Coutinho, right? If you look at Coutinho's card, he's still at 60-something K, 50, 58K, 56K, 55K, right? That's where I, I like to make the comparisons. But with the expensive comparisons, obviously, Neymar, God's here amongst men. The card is like no other. This thing is a god. He's one of the best players in this game, right? But with Paulinho's card, right? When you're comparing him to the other cards, this Paulinho, you're probably never going to see an inform from him again, right? So if you want to have fun with a really cool purple card in your team that's a different player like Paulinho that isn't Coutinho's, that isn't Williams, it's worth getting the card, in my opinion. It looks like a fun card. Um, I just, obviously, the passing is really bad. And the passing in certain situations... Yeah, it's very noticeable, right? Doing those outside the foot passes, inside the foot passes, left foot pass, right foot pass, all very noticeable, right? Willian, Willian's passing is so good that you can actually use his card as a cam. That's how fantastic it is, right? So again, very, very good card in that regard. But again, when you put these cards in the team, you're linking up with Brazilians, right? So if you were to put Paulinho in the team, uh, and you got people like Fabinho, Roberto Firmino. Your team needs to basically revolve around either Brazilians or EPL. Other Brazilians that exist in this game aren't very good in those general positions. CDMs, you can get uh, Casemiro, but Casemiro's pace is very low. Uh, strikers, you can get Gabriel Jesus instead of Roberto Firmino. If you want to start the team with the 4-3-3 and have Gabriel Jesus up top as a striker, uh, definitely worth looking into as well. But in terms of the selections... Uh, that you have for that position the only real selections you have is these three and can't forget this one card here which is a left mid card instead of a left wing and that is Douglas Costa I'm gonna put him right here so Douglas Costa oh Philippe Anderson too I forgot about Philippe Anderson we'll put him we'll put him in the in the list as well Philippe Anderson and Douglas Costa Tyson, uh, do I do I want to compare with a Tyson? What's Tyson's finishing and stuff? Composure and finishing is too low, so I wouldn't really compare it to that too much. Uh, or Charleston Kennedy, yeah. So those are the only the only other two options. So we got Philippe Anderson. Philippe, we're gonna put these cards over here so we can separate everything between everything. Philippe Anderson and Douglas Costa are, are your other choices. So. Here's the problem with Douglas Costa, like I mentioned in the last video, is that he is a left-footed player on the left side. And, you know, shoot, shooting across goal and making that extra pass to the side is, it doesn't really, it should work well this year, but it doesn't really work that well. So it's not really worth getting someone like Douglas Costa. The biggest thing with this card, as you can see, is his lack of finishing. That's the only thing that makes this card really terrible, because in terms of his characteristics, agility, balance, and dribbling stats in general are very good, right? So if EA were to increase the card's finishing for the first in form by at least, honest to God, an 8, because an 8 would bring him up to a 75, right? Um... <sighs> would I improve it by an 8? Or I think, I think it would have to be more. Honestly, I think it would have to be improved by at least a 10. So it's on 77. Seventy-seven. I'm just gonna do the math here with the composure, because eighty-four composure. Hmm. I'm kind of thinking this through because eighty-four composure is great. Sixty-seven finishing is awful. I'm I'm thinking about what EA should do with the finishing, but they won't. They don't do it that drastically, but they really should. I'm okay with like. Okay, I'm okay with sixty-seven. No. I'm okay with the finishing being drastically improved. It's weird that people complain about drastic improvements. Like Mars is a perfect example, right? Because 67 with 84 composure, see, it doesn't really balance out because your finishing is so awful, right? That it just doesn't really balance out. Like I'm thinking about it. It doesn't really work. Yeah, if, if they improve his, his card by one inform, it's only a 68 on his first inform, but they really got to improve it more drastically uh, or drastically to make the card more usable. So... 
it's not really worth using Douglas Costa at all, right? Like it is in the in the case of him ha- him having dribbling pace and passing, but in general, not so much, right? Philippe Anderson, right? I'm gonna put him over here because he's a pretty decent, decent comparison. Because the thing that's missing with this card is a little bit of low reaction, so the dribbling isn't the dribbling is quick, but the reaction of doing the dribble isn't that quick. Which it's those little sharp little touches, and then the finishing is at 75. So right off the bat, you got to give this card a sniper. No ifs, ands, or bats or, or buts. You got to increase increase the uh, composure, reaction, so on and so forth, right? So you got to give this card a sniper. So in terms of the comparisons that you see between Philippe Anderson, Coutinho, Douglas Costa, we're just going to take him out because he's a left-footed player on the left side of poor finishing. In regards to all these four comparisons in terms of price that you have to pay for and all that kind of stuff, I would still buy the card if you were thinking about it in the fun concept. If you were thinking about putting money into an SPC that you will never get, never get that money back, that's the mentality you have to go into it with, right? Because 83 shooting, 85 pace, 84 dribbling. Not a bad card. The thing that's nice about this card, and it's a thing that I almost forgot about because this is a huge one, is the physical, right? Because he is five foot nine, but he has 87 aggression with 75 strength and 86 jumping. That's very nice to have as well, right? That's a huge, huge plus. The aggression is big. So uh, when you're when you do a wide pass to tell a player to get in behind, the aggressiveness that they have to try to get that ball back, really good. Defensively, also very good as well, right? So those are a couple things that you should look at if you are considering getting the card. Philippe Anderson is a good option, but he has low finishing. Coutinho, obviously, low in the pace department and the shooting department. Williams a good card, but William lacks in the physical presence, and he lacks in the higher composure because 79 is just so low in this game, right? Uh, but that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you guys are looking into doing this SBC, I would say it is worth it in regards to it being a cool purple card that'll probably he actually might get a team of the year. So if you're if you're if you don't really care about waiting until the team of the year, then uh, that's up to you really. But it's a cool card. I think it's a good SBC that EA added. It's pretty affordable. Um, I think that's pretty much as far as it goes. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video today. If you guys enjoy these types of videos, be sure to like, leave a like in the comment section down below or the video down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Love you guys.